Hello, teammates, and welcome to The Goal Diggers, a program where we discuss stories of leadership and motivation with sports serving as a metaphor dedicated to daily grinders, corporate athletes, and go-getters. This is Simone Haldon, digging in with my co-hosts, Reddy San Agustin and Robbie Devera, and we are your resident goal diggers. In a previous episode, we had a conversation with one of the most accomplished athletes in the country, a decorated swimmer, Akiko Thompson Guevara, who shared with us the three tips she learned on how we can develop courage, which are number one, know that excellence is personal. Know your purpose and remember that what we do is a reflection of us. Number two, show up, face your fear, and be all there. Fear will always be there, but it doesn't have to stop you from achieving your goals. And sometimes fear can even push you forward. Top performers like Akiko do things afraid and still choose to show up and take action. And related to that is step number three. You gotta put in the work to overcome the fear. We can never underestimate the power of effort when you know you've prepared and trained enough and you've allowed the process to guide you fear becomes much easier to overcome. So those are such relatable tips on courage and how to be a high performer from Akiko Thompson Guevara. And speaking of courage, one can have a short supply of it when it comes to entering new frontiers. And today we're gonna dig into the story of someone who has helped pave the way, especially for Filipinas in the world stage of her sport. But of course, I wouldn't be able to do this without the help of my fellow gold diggers so, Relly, Robbie, what can our teammates expect from this episode? Thanks, Sim. Well, hi guys, it's Saturday again, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Gold Diggers. Do stick around with us tonight as this episode will dig deep into the life of one of the country's first female billiard player and world champion. She was also recognized as one of the most influential athletes of the past decade. I'll say no more as I will pass it on to Robbie to formally introduce our special guest. Robbie, take it away, man. Thanks, Rails. Hey, teammates, we're excited to welcome our next guest, who is one of the most decorated sports icons of our time and one of the longest serving members of the national team. We've got a kindred individual here, a fellow gold digger, and certainly one of the pioneers in women in sports in the country. We have Rubilin Bing Amit in the house. So we hope you stay tuned as we dig into how she can teach us a thing or two about how to enter new frontiers like she has. Back to you, Sim. Thanks, guys. So I'm really stoked to tell you guys more about today's guest because she's the first Filipina to become a world pool champion. And she has won 14 medals in the Southeast Asian Games since she started representing the country in 2005. And since she first qualified for the WPA World Championships in 2006, she became world champion twice, the first and only Filipina to achieve such a feat. She is known to be one of the friendliest people and has represented the country well in the world stage. And even more than becoming world champion, she has won awards for her sportsmanship. It's such an honor to have her here and it's a privilege to share her story. So let's all welcome Rubelin Bing Amit. Hi everyone, uh, good evening, mayang gabi sa tanan. Uh, I'd like to thank the Gold Diggers, Relly, Simone, and Robbie for having me. Such an honor. I'm really excited about the discussion and I hope that uh, meron kayong mapulot uh, in my, uh, my experience and my life story. Again, thank you. So thanks, Bing, for joining us tonight. Um, so tell us, what have you been up to lately? Uh, well, now there are, no, there are no tournaments because of the pandemic. It's kind of difficult to to travel, especially uh, most of our tournaments are abroad. Um, since the pandemic started March of last year, uh, we took a big hit because we lost a loved one. So my main focus was really to cope. Uh, what I did was I attended Zoom sessions for mental wellness. At first, it was really focused on on coping, on being able to overcome that difficulty. But as it progressed, several months up to now, I still, I still, uh, I still attend the uh, mental wellness by Project Steady under uh, Gang Badoy, Teacher Gang, uh, MWF. Uh, I, I somehow uh, was able to connect it with billiards because from coping, 
hoping from that loss now it's about i know uh, it's about knowing myself more it's about uh knowing my childhood traumas uh the decisions the my decisions that are being affected by those by those uh, experiences when i was a child so they're mostly that and now i'm having my billiard room fixed so hopefully by in a few weeks time i'll be able to really focus and be ready for the sea games by the end of the year i love that you you really took the time to to uh, to to work on your mental health uh, healthness mental health uh, and and, <laughs> and we actually saw each other in in one of those rooms right uh, back in yes. the summer last year and yeah i, I really appreciated those sessions those are really great sessions on especially on on processing the all these different experiences and especially coming from you know the start of the pandemic and everyone adjusting to it it was really helpful to have a, a group like that where everyone's just talking and you know there's no judgment in the room and everyone's just so open to sharing their experiences yeah definitely definitely hindi lang yun apart from you talking about your experience you're also learning from others and of course from from the facilitator which is teacher gang yeah so much to learn from her also i mean yes yes i love i mm. love the environment that she had that she made in that room and also yes. everyone else like it's it's hard not to talk about things and you know people are just like you know uh it's 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 important to know that people have gone through what you've experienced, but also even if they did not, um, it it's like them uh, validating that you know yeah. you went through some shit, man, and you know you're alive, you survived, and, and it's you, comforting. <laughs> yeah, it's very comforting. Yeah. <laughs> so Bing, um, let's bring our audience up to speed and remind them on your roots and how you began your amazing career. So can you tell us about how it all began? Tell us about your journey in billiards so far in a nutshell. So I started when I was 12 years ago. Not so long ago. Siguro just a couple of years back lang. <laughs> so <laughs> I was in grade 6. Uh, but my first sport was really basketball. But if you've seen me in person, you would know na hindi ako pang basketball. Because <laughs> of the height, the height requirement. Anyway, uh And then my dad became interested in billiards. It was his, ano, it was his stress reliever. So my dad's my playmate. So I would always tag along with him uh, in a billiard hall in Cebu. I was I was in Cebu pa then. Mao ng kamo kung bisaya. So so I'm very fluent in in Cebuano. Uh, and then uh, siguro this is really my path because from from staying in Cebu. Uh, if we would want to draw, if we would want to watch tournaments, he would fly to Manila to watch the Tatay Efren, the greats, uh, even San Nick Varner, the Earl Strickland. He would fly, uh, and then. But what happened was the family had to make an adjustment because my grandparents uh, uh, transferred to the U.S. and my dad's the eldest child, so we needed we needed to transfer to Manila to, for him to handle the business, and that was that was when it started. It all started because dito talaga ang tournaments. In Cebu kasi it was mostly practice. And I just play by myself. And if not by myself, ang kalaro ko, mga cousins ko, which was ipitan lang ng kamay. Sinong unang umiyak, talo. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so from there, uh, we transferred to Manila. And then dito talaga, I started from class C, which is the lowest class. And then class B, class A, class O. That's in the, that's, uh, no, in the amateur level. And then... Uh, when I was in high, that was in high school. But when I was in college, first year, second year, medyo naglalaro pa ako. But majoring na, I took up BS in accountancy uh, in USD. So when I when I was uh, nasa major na, sabi ko hindi kaya, hindi kaya na uh, pagsabayin na billiards and schooling. So I I kind of stopped playing billiards. But my real reason is my real reason was secret na lang natin was that because nagkaaway kami ng father ko. Pag natatalo ako, nagagalit siya. So sabi ko, if wala naman akong, there, there, nung time na yon wala namang ibang uh, kinakagalit yung dad ko sa akin. So sabi ko, if billiards, magagalit siya, then I'll stop billiards. So ang binigay kong reason was, I want to focus on studies. So so after college, I wanted to pursue ano, being a CPA lawyer. Yun talaga ang dream ko, to be a CPA lawyer. But my dad had other plans. So ang big influence ko talaga sa paglalaro is my father. Siya talaga nag-push sa akin. When, uh, when I wanted to review for the, uh, for the board exams, uh, binigyan niya ako ng, ano, ng bait. Bibigyan niya ako ng kotse as long as hindi ako mag-boards. 
So, doon ako sa path na mag-business. To help out sa business. I helped out sa business. But then, I played muna in one international tournament. My first, which luckily I was able to win. And then when I came back, I realized na wala masyadong opportunity for women's billiards at that time. So, nagtrabaho ako. I joined the family business. Una sa cargo and then sa canteen. And then, uh, after that, na call center ako for a year, which I really enjoyed. Uh, but, in 2005, nagkaroon ng... Uh, nagkaroon ng news na magkaka- ang SEA Games dito magkakaroon ng women's event. So when it was uh, it was confirmed, I joined the qualifying. That was five qualifying tournaments. I was able to enter the national team. So from 2005, uh, I was lucky to win gold, two gold medals. And then from then on, yun na, redirection na. So I've been playing for over 27 years, a little over 27 years, and a national athlete for how many years na? Almost 16 years. Diba? So not so long ago. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story. You know? So we have to thank <laughs> your family and um, serendipity yes. in bringing you to Manila and eventually, you know, uh, making history in, uh, yeah. in the game. So, yeah, but I think more than that, Robbie, it's really the height. We should thank the <laughs> height. Because if it's not height, it's not going to go billiards. It's a joke. Lang. <laughs> okay, Bing. So, how, so, you know, Given that you've been winning, you know, since 2005, all this, how, how has the journey been for you so far? I mean, knowing that, uh, you know, you're the first uh, female pool player, no? and then having to, having to go through, you know, what you call a man's sport, right? How are you able to, to break that barrier you know, and, and really get yourself in the system and, and really making sure that there is a place you know, for, for, for women in billiards? The thing is, when I started, when I started on the amateur levels pa lang, I was joining the men's tournament na. Kasi konti lang yung women, so hindi sila nakakapag-create ng women's division. So I was always playing against the men. And then, siguro because of my family also, my dad, parang hindi naman niya pinafeel sa akin na uh, I'd be less of a player since I'm a woman competing against the men. Parang I felt pa nga na I was more challenged. Kasi nung time na yon parang pag ako yung kalaban, sasabihin ng mga guys na parang, oh pare, bye na yan. Bye, di ba? Yung parang next stage na. Parang bye na yan. Kasi babae kalaban mo. Tapos I'd be like, halika dito. Alam mo yun, parang <laughs> babae pala ha. And then yun. So, it wasn't difficult for me na ano, I didn't feel na it was a man's sport na it was male dominated kasi parang ako parang it was really just a game for me i just really enjoyed the complexity of of billiards and dami kong uh, gusto ko kasi yung learning so ang dami kong natutunan parang hindi hindi na sa satisfy yung need ko for learning because of billiards parang laging may natututunan up to now so so yun Again, what was your question? Ang daldal ko kasi. So, nakalimutan ko yung question. Ang yung question mo. <laughs> no, it was really more <laughs> journey, how, no? How was the journey? How was the journey? How is it yeah. for you now? Yes. <laughs> so, so, yeah. From 2005, I first joined the national team. And then it was, una, it was really just enjoyment, just representing the country. And then, ang lagi kong sinasabi is that if I win the gold medal, it's just gravy, ganyan. So, it was just enjoyment. Laro, laro, laro. But it came to a point na parang hindi na gravy yung, ano, yung gold medal. Eh. Parang siya na yung rice. Na kailangan <laughs> siya talaga yung nandun. Diba? Alam tayo yung pinag. Gusto natin ng kanin lagi. So parang yun yung naging ano for me. Parang yung transition na from just enjoying the game. It, siguro because of, of my journey. Which, which makakwento ko siguro later. Yung mga difficulties and struggles ko as an athlete. Uh, parang nagkaroon ng need nagkaroon ng need to win. So somehow, uh, I was able to to overcome that, ano, yung mindset na kailangan manalo. And then going back, ngayon, ngayon, actually, ngayon pa lang, ngayon pa lang talaga, mga, just a few years pa lang na I'm really trying to enjoy the game again. Na parang, parang yung dati na, win, na parang, either I win or lose, whether I win or lose, it's, it's more of the enjoyment, being the present moment. It's great to hear, and I guess for for all the women out there just what tuning in, you know this is what this is what it's all about. You know, just focusing on yourself, having fun, yes. and uh, not being intimidated. You know, being it, it being a man's sport. If if they can do it, you guys can do it as well. 
I'm sure this is going to be an interesting conversation as we move forward. So, Simone, floor is yours. Thanks, Relly. So you mentioned your journey, and you know there are ups and downs, and and uh, we want to focus on 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 what were the different things that you went through to get to where you are. I mean, given your illustrious back, illustrious and decorated background in the game. And it's surprising that there were moments, there were times that you actually almost left the sport altogether. So can you share mm-hmm. with our audience about those times and tell us what you've learned from that part of your career? Mm-hmm. So talking about leaving the sport, several times, several times. First was uh, when I was in college. Uh, I mentioned a while ago that... Uh, I thought that if I'm going to get dad ko because of billiards, then I'll leave billiards. And then second was in 2008. So in 2008, 2009, around that era, 2007 to 2009, because we went through some financial struggle, uh, I thought of going to work, to finding a job rather than uh, competing because I felt that what we needed at that time was consistency of the income coming in. So, and there were times then, there were other times when times na I felt na I was doubting myself na parang champion ba talaga ako. And this, this was, ano ah, even after winning, winning a world championship, there were still times na I would doubt myself. Na I would think na, is this really, ano, for me, is this, syempre as you grow older, iniisip mo rin yung finances. Is this, uh, how do you say it, financially advantageous? So, several times. But what I noticed is that those decisions were made or were considered kasi hindi naman talaga entirely natutuloy, were considered because that was what I thought was right at that time. But wala eh, na naig pa rin talaga yung the love and the passion that I have for, for the sport. As in literal, talagang before the pandemic yung talagang you jump out of bed because excited ka to play. Ganon. Ganon. I'm, I'm really excited and ano, I really enjoy, I really enjoy kasi as I mentioned kanina din na uh, nasa satisfy niya ko, nasa satisfy kasi ng sport, ng billiards, yung need ko for learning. Parang hindi na tatapos yung learning part. So, so yun. And hindi lang yun sa billiards mismo, maraming aspect. Uh, maraming aspect like my personal life, yung, uh, Like you, you learning is spiritual. Even the finances, it's tied up with me playing. Also, it's intertwined. It's interesting how you know, everything ties up together, and you know you discover yes. the love of the game and and the fact that the sport satisfies your need for learning. I think that's very interesting, also because it it's it usually uh, translates to other things that you do in your life too, and that says a lot mm-hmm. about you. Uh, So I mean, what? So now I mean, what did you feel working with the likes of of some of the game's greatest players ever, like like Efren Batareas, like Django Bustamante, and Ronnie Alcan? It's uh, no, it's from from someone from a 12 year old who would fly to Manila to watch them play, and being called their teammate. Ano pa rin ako don? Ah, uh, nasa starstruck pa rin ako don. Even us leaving for, like, for example, mga Sea Games, Asian Indoor, and us wearing the same uniform, kinikilig pa rin ako doon up to now. Uh, in 2009, I was chosen to be the partner of Tatay Efren. Naglaro kami ng doubles, a world mixed doubles. Ang tagal kong tinitigan yung email na yun by the organizer because I was like, hindi ako makapaniwala na I'm beside the legend, the goat, di ba? Call him the goat na nandyan sila but then pag nandyan na hindi mo mararamdaman yung yabang walang ere and then hindi sila madamot siguro that's where I'm coming from also kaya I want to share yung alam ko rin because that's, that, that's what I experienced from them yung hindi sila madamot hindi sila madamot sila tatay Efren si Coach Django lalo si Coach Django talagang na, naging naikipaglaro sa akin he will take the time to play tapos si Tatay Efren, if he sees me, minsan, ulitin mo to, ulitin mo to. Kahit minsan may kalaban ako, <laughs> sabi niya, guguloy niyo mesa, ulitin mo to, paano ulit to gagawin? Ganyan. Tignan natin. So, so it's, 
I would say na it's, I'm really blessed and siguro ito talaga path ko because lahat ng, there's a conspiracy. There's a conspiracy to help me para mag-progress dito sa laro ko. A conspiracy to help you. Like, they, they, yeah, they, they're like, like oh, this is our <laughs> thing. Let's make sure she make it. Through. So the, you've been working yes. with them even before you you won the, your first world championship? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, in, in, in the team and in some tournaments. And kasi even if hindi naman talaga yung interaction as consistent before I won the world championships, just the mere presence of them, just the mere presence of sila tatay, encouraging enough na eh. Tsaka si tatay Efren, if you see him sa training center, sa game ball, uh, that's the national training center, nandun din siya, day in, day out. Mm-hmm. And sobrang simple lang, nakikita mo, and then the, the, the work that he puts, talagang todo, talagang todo trabaho din siya. At the age of how, how old? 60 plus? Pero yung work ethics niya, nandun pa rin, buong buo pa rin. So, what about um, training tips? So, what, what did you discover from working with these guys? Uh, working with them, I saw that like different players have different uh, different strategies or different, even the form. Nakikita mo, when you watch Pinoy players, iba-iba. Iba-iba yung form, iba-iba yung pamamaraan, iba-iba yung uh, way of placing the cue ball. So what I did was to, to watch them. I watched them and then I tried to get bits and pieces on what I can, I can apply sa laro ko. And then from there, I tried to build on it. Especially nung time na... Uh, in 2012, I, I got uh, I got uh, I got a personal coach who who taught me at home. After after training sa national team, I would go home and uh, train with my personal coach, Coach Lester. And then uh, from then on, when when he helped me understand the concept of the game, I say before naman when I was young, it was really watching. It. Most of the Pinoy players, naman, we learn the sport through watching. Yung mga, idol na, yung mga idol namin, like watching F, Tatay Efren, Coach Django, Kuya Dennis, yan, sila Kuya Ronnie, when we watch them, and then gayahin ko nga. So para gaya, gaya, gaya kami na gaya, ganyan. But from there, hindi ko talaga, yung understanding nila, hindi ko alam kung ano yung nakikita nila sa, sa cue ball, sa patterns. So with this, when I had my personal coach, uh, he was able to explain to me the concept Yung, yung, yung very detail of things. So from there, while I watch, nung nagkaroon ako ng knowledge na yun, while I watch, I'm able to understand and I'm able to build and I'm able to tweak it na. I'm able to tweak it na, ah, ganito pala. So when I apply this, ganito pala mangyayari. So there. So uh, it's a big help na nandyan sila, andito yung grades and andito yung knowledge. And andito ka knowing kung ano yung capable ka, kung ano yung limitations mo rin, and then pinagsama-sama mo yun, and then dun. Dun talaga yung, yung understanding. Yun yung, yun yung I, I felt na what propelled me to, to really improving in my game. What I picked up from there was that, I mean, you got to work with all these, these really talented, yes. talented players, and you got to learn from them firsthand. And the fact that you're able to pick up all these different things, and you pick up things that you that that you could work for your uh, that that you could use and made them mm-hmm. your own, and finally, like you know, this is how Bing plays, and and that's that's a really interesting thing because when it comes to high performers, also high performers have this habit of making their own curriculum, right? And you yeah. made your own curriculum, you made Bing's training. So uh, now uh, let's go back to you know the, how there were gaps in between your participation with the national team mm-hmm. and you know how but also like notably between your two world championships and so I'm curious like what was going on in between because it seems but it seems like you know that after those gaps you came back even stronger so what motivated you during those times? Ang galing, ang galing. you were able to notice the gaps kasi importante yun eh, yung gap na yun. Because dun talaga yung building mo eh, yung gap na yun. The victory is just 
one moment in your life. But the gap is more important. Iba yung sabi lang, mind the gap. Anyway, so, <laughs> so yun. Uh, from 2007, which I won, my, I, which I placed second, and then to 2009, there was a gap. That gap was, I went through financial difficulties with the family, and then uh, I turned into politics, a sport. So it was really, I know, it was really a dark moment for me. And then in 2009, I won the, my first world championship. And then to my second world championship in 2013, there was another gap. And ito naman was, ano, uh, because when I won the world championships in 2009, uh, nagkaroon ng mga voices in my head. Pero hindi lang voices in my head. Actually, I heard it from other people as well. People whom I trust. Na chamba yun, na wala yun, ano lang yun. Parang di maulit yun, or laos na yun, ganun. 2009, I won the world championships. 2010, I was able to place third. Pero grabe yung stress. Because I was really trying to prove to people na hindi, world champion ako. World champion material ako. But me proving myself, sobrang stressful, sobrang, how do you say it? Parang, it wasn't fun anymore. Kaya kanina when I mentioned na nawala yung fun, because naging iba yung objective ko eh. Naging it was about proving to them that Ruben and Amit is a world champion. And now that you mentioned yung dalawang gap na yun, kasi ito talaga yung uh, parang gap na memorable for me. I noticed that the gap in 2007 to 2009 was a financial learning. The gap in 2009 to 2013 was a mental learning. That's why when you mentioned that I came back stronger, it's because those learnings, daladala ko. Kung baga sa ano, baon, baon, baon ko yun. Nandito yun. Nandito yun sa likod ko. Daladala ko sila. And now looking back, thankful ako. Because if 2007 to 2009 didn't happen and I continued winning, wala yung money. I wouldn't see the value of money. I wouldn't be able to invest in those. And I won't be able to share this learning to those future players or athletes who will pursue. So now I can be someone who could say that if you don't take care of your money, it's not about how much you earn, but what you do with your earning. Parang walang credibilidad yun kung hindi ko pinagdaanan yun. And yun 2009 to 2013, again, another, another piece na pwede kong ishare na meron ng credibilidad dahil dumaan din ako doon. Dumaan ako dun sa part na talagang I doubted myself to the point na parang ang sama ako sa sarili ko. When I would make a mistake, nasa akin, ang bubo mo, yung ganon. Yung talaga, ang tanga-tanga mo, dumaan ako sa ganon. So, I'm thankful of those times because now I am, now na I'm more mature, <laughs> I'm more mature with those 27 years of experience, <laughs> not so long ago. Now, I can tell those players and athletes na I went through that. Diba? Kung pwedeng hindi yung da- pagdaanan, learn from, learn from me. Diba? Pero kung pagdadaanan yung okay lang din yun because it will really etch something in your heart na hindi mo makalimutan which happened to me. So, so there. You know, they say wisdom comes with experience and you know, all yes. those different things, that, all those difficulties that you've gone through uh, are also nece- necessities in some way. Yes, uh, Definitely. So, I mean, you you've went through, you've gone through all of that, um, all those gaps, um, your financial, and also uh, what was the second one? Mental. The mental, the mental uh, learnings. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that you realized all those things. I mean, it's very practical too, because as an athlete, especially in the Philippines, uh, there the challenge is also you know the financial aspect. Not all at athletes who, who are playing at the top level are, are earning really well. But you coming, I mean, especially with all your experiences and, you know, looking into the future, also people that you're, you're and even now people who are, you're working with, the young ones you're mentoring with, a uh, mentoring also, at least they're aware of these, of these challenges. And this is something that you've been through already. And it's something that you can talk about with them, knowing mm-hmm. that, you know, that you've mm-hmm. gotten it already. Uh, mm-hmm. But, let me let me dial back a bit because uh, I, I want to uh, dig deeper into your experience in the world championship. Because what's interesting is you, you came in 
the, uh, the first time you got into the World Championship was in 2006. So how was that experience for you? you know, how did you get there? Mm, uh, in 2006, so coming from a win, uh, double gold in 2005, so I was confident. I was confident that oh, I could take on the world stage. Ganyan. So my manager, uh, Mr. Puyat, uh, was able to secure me a spot through wildcard in the world championships. When I joined, I didn't realize it was a completely different level. Na it's something that you, parang kumbaga sa exam, hindi ka pwedeng stock knowledge. <laughs> Kailangan talaga, you have to really study and you have to solve problems for you to be able to prepare. So that was, that was a big thing for me. 2006 is a big thing for me because dun ko nakita na because I was able to join ng wild card, I felt na hindi ako worthy to be there. Parang hindi ako kasal, parang saling pusa lang ako. Even dun sa group photo, sa group photo sa opening, dun ako sa gilid, dun ako sa pinakagilid na parang tahimik lang na parang hindi nag, nanalo the year before. Alam mo yun, yung parang akala mo kakakuha lang ng Q-stick, ganun yung demeanor ko nun. And then, we played in Taiwan, and the venue was really cold, as in shivering cold. Uh, I didn't, I didn't bring any, ano eh, but I, I brought was, uh, polo, and, basta ang, ano ko lang nun, look decent. But I didn't research the weather, I didn't research where the venue was, which I do now, say because of that. So, because of because of 2006, I'm able to I'm able to equip myself. Na. I'm able to prepare for two, 2007, and then taking into consideration all the factors that could affect my game. I think that's so cute, though. Like, yeah, you you ended up there, and it's like, oh crap, it's so cold here. I forgot I didn't bring the right clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you you mentioned earlier that you know you, you were coming in actually pretty confident, you know, winning two golds even before that. But then you know, as, as you're going through it and you realized, you know, you had some doubts, and that's a very human thing, you know, having those doubts. And you're already you're already there, but you still have that. But yeah. what was interesting also was actually after 2006 in 2007, um, you came in more prepared and you even beat Alison Fisher. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's also known as the Duchess of Doom, and that and yes. Alison Fisher like won multiple world championships even before that. And mm-hmm. think about it, you you got to beat her in in the group stage, right? And mm-hmm. that year you came in second uh, on mm-hmm. your second year in the championships. That was after that um, in in two thousand eight. You know, not not much was happening for you then, but then in two thousand nine you came back. Crazy strong, you won your first world championship. So how is it like going through all that and winning that first one? As I mentioned, in 2006, I wasn't prepared at all. Now, in 2007, I ko, at least alam ko na. Kumbaga sa ano, na-scout ko na. Kasi same venue, na-scout ko na. So I came in, baon lahat, turtleneck, di ba? <laughs> so... Wala ba akong sense of ano talaga eh, kung anong parang fashion. Talagang akin is function. Alam mo yun? Kung baga, ito hindi ako giginawin. So ito talaga suotin ko, di ba? Iba ibang kulay, black, white, red, na puro turtleneck. And then, since I had that confidence na, ah, alam ko na to. Alam ko na yung pinapasok ko. Kasi dito ako last year. Eh. Somehow, parang, uh, you got comfortable. I mean, you got comfortable of same same hotel, the same venue, and then hindi na ako masyadong starstruck sa mga tao kasi nung una parang, oh, si ano yun? Si ano yung ganun? Puro ka ganun? And then 2007, medyo parang, oh, medyo cool ka na. Medyo parang relax ka na, calm ka na. But then when I played Tamaka, when I played the Duchess of Doom, si Alison Fisher, she's like the Efren Batarias of uh, women's pool. When I played her, grabe, nag-fan mode ako. As in, yung parang, it's such an honor, ma'am, to play against you. <laughs> ganun, ganun. Hindi pa nang just start. Naisip ko nga eh. Naisip ko, baka inisip niya, sinasaywar ko siya. Kasi kung kunyari ngayon, di ba, parang, no, baloko to ha, sinasaywar ako. Pero I was really just a fan ng time na yun. 
And then I needed one win for me to advance to the knockout stage, which I had a difficult time doing, but I was able to win against Allison uh, for me to be able to uh, advance. And then I was just really playing. I was comfortable with what I was wearing. I was comfortable of the environment, of the people around. So there I was. I was just, I was just performing, enjoying. Kumbaga, parang in the zone lang ako. But in the finals, dun ko na-realize na biglang nag-sink in sa akin. Na, this is my dream. Right here is my dream. On my second year, I could achieve my dream. Ayun. Naglaro, nagtama, bola. Tama bola, meaning wala na akong ma-shoot. Yung mga butas parang may cover na. Hindi ako makashoot. Because nawala na ako. I became focused on, I, my, my focus became on the idea na pwede ako mag-world champion. So that was when I realized na yung mental toughness ko kulang pa. Because I didn't believe it. Ito ay like na may mention is that the difference between 2007 and 2009 was because naniwala na ako na world champion ako. Because I visualized na. Na-visualize ko na na I can be a world champion. Noong 2007, para lang akong batang, halika dito, laro tayo, ganyan, I'll win over you. Ganon. But nung nandun na yung reality na pwede akong mag-world champion, doon na ako nag-crumble down. Doon na yung parang, eh, wala to sa, pla- wala to sa ano ko eh. Parang, pag iniisip ko yung mundo ko, wala pa to eh. Gusto ko siya, pero wala pa siya. Hindi pa ako naniniwala. So I built on that. I built on that belief. Uh, I was able to encounter this sa isang talk, na sa isang lamesa, kailangan buo yung paa. So, yung yung top is me being a world champion. Yung paa na yun, kulang pa. So, binuo ko yung paa na yun para by 2009, world champion na talaga. Yung tabletop, solid na. So, in 2008, uh, I didn't do much no 2008 because we were, uh, because of the... Uh, gulo sa association nung time na yon. We were really affected. We were removed from the team. So there was nothing much in 2008. And then, so, na- nakabawi. We were, uh, nakabawi ako 2009. 2009 was actually a good year for me. I was able to win my first world championships, two gold medals in the SEA Games, and uh, world mixed doubles championship with Tatay Efren. You're, the, the way you're telling all this, it's, it, you're just a very observant person, you know? Uh, and and like it goes to show in 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 the results also of you know, you you coming back in 2009 and and in 2013 winning also your world champions and you know remember the gaps that we were talking about in between and usually it's hard to get back on track right and being gone for a while also and you know how how do you get that mo- motivation but i mean to you what was something that that really help you get back on track with things? Well, what's something that you value, value that help you get back on the horse? I would say uh, a lot of factors, actually, uh, within that uh, time frame, yung up to 2009. We're talking about 2009 lang muna. A lot of factors. Uh, malaking bagay talaga, or two things, I would say, is una is uh, support from loved ones, especially my family. Because when we went through difficult times, hindi sila bumitaw as ako being billiard player. Kasi may time na I mentioned na gusto ko na magtrabaho to be able to provide. But they said, no, just continue what you love doing. Which paid off naman. Because we had that meeting in 2009 of February. That was when really, that, <coughs> that was when, <coughs> sorry, that was when shit happened talaga. 2009 February yung walang wala na even my brother had to file <clears throat> ano ba yun yung leave of absence as LOA from Lasal because I couldn't sustain him sa Lasal na eh alak eh, every four months ba yung tuition niya so parang ako parang hindi ko na kaya kailangan kong bawasan yung stress and then that was we had a meeting in 2009 February on whether I'm going to work and they said no Just continue what you're doing. And then 2009, June. June 6, I won my first world championship. So ang galing, ang galing nung, ang galing nung nangyari na yun. Yung trust that they had sa akin. Uh, second would be the mental game. Uh, during this time talaga, kasi yun ang baon ko eh, Yung mental game ko. 
hindi ko pa, nung time na yon hindi ko pa masyadong, to be honest, hindi pa ako masyadong intindido. Hindi ko pa masyadong naintindihan yung science behind sport, behind billiards talaga. Ang alam ko lang is, oh, ito ginawa ni Tatay Efren, ito yung nangyari. Ito yung napanood ko, ganito yung tira. Very basic pa lang yung alam ko nung time na yun. And yun yung baon-baon ko, mental toughness. Kasi when I visualize talaga, when I visualize na magiging world champion ako, na ito yung gusto ko mangyari, and it happened. And it happened. In 2013, I'll just jump lang, just to reiterate yung mental toughness na yun. In 2019, I played against Kelly Fisher, the world number one at that time. And she was like a machine. She was like a machine nung time na yun. When I played in the finals, down ako eh. Lagi akong down nung time na yun eh. It was a race to 10, race to 10. And lagi akong humahabol. Pero every time na nawawalan ako ng loob, biglang nagpa-flash sa isip ko na hawa ko yung trophy. I don't know why. Hindi ko alam kung bakit nangyayari yun. Maybe because of the visualization, discipline that I had nung time na yun. Parang yun na yung, yun yung ano eh, yung, yung sinasabi na the tournament hindi lang doon sa time na yun. It's not only that four days. Sa amin kasi sa billiards is four days. Hindi lang sa four days na yun. But way before that. So nagbubunga. Kaya for those na yung visualize, yung meditate, minsan hindi mo pa nakikita kasi hindi siya tangible. Hindi siya tangible na agad-agad makifeel mo. But just stick with it. Just stick with it. Mararamdaman mo yun kapag crunch time na. Kapag when, when talagang di, di ka na talaga dun mo makikita yung bunga nung, nung discipline na yun. It's good that you mentioned all of that because we're gonna dive deeper into everything that you just shared now. So, Robbie, take take it away. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, super, super insightful. Thank you so much, Bing, for the the candor, the honestness. No? So, ang dami kong ninotes sa uh, sinabi mo. And the overarching theme dun sa mga pinagkikwento mo, is all about discovery. So you dis- you I liked your self-awareness and how you discovered that it's a completely different level talaga when it came to the international stage, right? Mm-hmm. And despite learning from the best in the game that you had to develop your own style and your own way of playing the game. I like that. Mm-hmm. I also liked how you mentioned how you discovered the value of your support system and that your family had your back even in the toughest times and you know it pay, it it bore fruit naman later on yung yung tiis nila bore fruit later on which was your eventual win and lastly i think one of the most important things that you discovered and you delved so long on was your discovery of the lack of your mental toughness in the earlier part no and the, yeah. the importance of the contribution of the mental game so super mm-hmm. solid super solid realizations again coming from uh, you know deep self awareness in in the journey um, the question I'd like to ask is, um, you know, despite these achievements uh, post the 2006 and 2007 World Championship, you mentioned to us uh, that later on in the journey, you discovered that you still felt that you were still capable of more and even expressed your desire for even more development. Can, can you tell us about this realization and what it meant for you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, nung time na when I won my first World Championship, <clears throat> and then people would say na parang, wala na yan, laos na yan. Naisip ko, wala pa nga ako sa gitna eh, paano ako malalaos? Alam mo yun, wala sa gitna in terms of hindi fame. Hindi, kasi laos minsan parang connected to fame or connected to how relevant you are. But it was more of my learning, my knowledge. So alam ko nun na hindi pa, hindi pa po ako laos because hindi pa po ako natututo dun sa maximum level. Marami pa ako talagang dapat matutunan. So, uh, I mentioned na I had a personal coach in 2012. So from there, uh, ano kasi ako, uh, since uh, I really love math. So because of that, <clears throat> pinibase ko sa formulas. Gusto ko nang may formula. Kasi pag may formula, then pwede ka mag-build. So <clears throat> nung nalaman ko, nung nalaman ko yung formula of why things happen, of, of the reason, of the reason kung bakit ganito yung naging effect of what I do. Doon pa lang talaga ako nagkaroon ng formula of things. Uh, and the formulas na yun from the personal coach is the skill, the billiards. And nagkaroon din ako ng formula sa sarili ko. 
nalaman ko kung what works for me and what doesn't. Kasi like, for example, I'd say na, <clears throat> try to look for activities that would give you peace. Iisipin mo agad meditation or parang travel. It doesn't have to be that. Ako, as simple as maghugas ng pinggan. Iba-iba eh. Iba-iba yung what gives you peace. So, so again, medyo magta-touch base ako dun sa sinabi ni, ay, yung sa kanina na discovery. It's about you knowing what works for you. Kasi ako sa akin, breathing exercises doesn't work for me. Kasi may tendency ako to, to try to perfect it. Kunwari, pag inhale yung 1, 2, 3, tapos parang nasa-stress ako, ba't hindi perfect yung 1, 2, 3, 4 ko? Tapos kinuhold ko, bakit hindi siya perfect? Bakit stress na stress ako dun? So what works for me, nililist down ko. Like for example, what really works for me is, uh, especially nung time na I was really active with competing, is outward focus. So so there. Uh, and andami, andami. It's really exciting. If you, if you really want to build on your game, if you really want to build on your game, whether it's the skill, or it's knowing yourself, it's really exciting. Kasi ang dami mo talaga ang pwedeng malaman. Even, uh, even ultimo yung, for example, you have you have a game. How many hours before hindi na ako pwedeng mag-water? Kasi sa amin, hindi pwedeng mag-toilet break na mag-toilet break. So I have to know that as well. Kung ano yung food intake ko, kung pag-breakfast, pag-tournament, halos puro ano lang, egg and vegetables and fruits. Yun lang. Pero pag hindi tournament, ang dami kong pinakain. Which is, hindi rin healthy. But anyway, nasabi ko lang. So, uh, medyo nalalayo ako. But anyway, what I'm saying is, uh, to, to have structure, to know, na like like with me, meron akong, uh, before a tournament, if I have, if meron akong time, I have a six-week program for myself. Three weeks for learning kung ano yung mga weaknesses ko, kung ano yung I feel na I need to improve on, and then two weeks na simulating the tournament na kung saan ako sasali. Kung ano yung cloth na ginagamit, <coughs> excuse me, kung ano yung cloth, kung ano yung temperature, kung ano yung humidity, more or less, kung maulan ba nung time na yon, kung ano yung shot clock, kung ano yung, uh, kung ano yung dress code, kasi minsan kailangan ng may bow tie, And pag hindi tama yung bow tie mo, minsan nakakasakal. So you really have to practice with the bow tie also. So, marami, marami. So that's the part na focus ka na, lock in ka na. This is the tournament I'm going uh, to join. Ito yung focus ko. And then the last week, or the, to finish the to, to finish the, sec, the sixth week na, wala, ano na yun? I try to remove my mind from the tournament. So I go to dinners, to, to movies, <clears throat> I go to my happy place. Kasi ano na yun, tapering. That's, that's me saying, na uh, Bing, my nickname is Bing. Eh. <clears throat> Sorry, my nickname is Bing. So sinasabi ko sa sarili ko na, you're prepared. No need to stress out. You're prepared, you've done the work, now relax. Everything will just work out. Baga, kung whatever man na, ano, na kulang mo, God will provide. So, kung whatever man yung result, ano, just accept it and just enjoy. Just enjoy the ano. So, yun, I did that since, <clears throat> I did that, uh, since I've been doing that, medyo mas, ano, mas naging relaxed and mas na-enjoy ko yung tataro. That's great. No? So, what I picked up from that, it's really different strokes for different folks. And yes. what you did was, you did, you actually put your own personal meaning and how to Uh, you know, achieve the successes that you uh, wanted to achieve and even in, the, in terms of the approach, right? So you mentioned about putting structure or having strategy in the approach to the game. You mentioned, you know, you had a certain way of um, timing your training with regard to the load, the tapering, and then the relaxation prior to the tournament and even paying particular mm-hmm. attention to very specific things like humidity, like the cloth, and even your attire, no? So I like that because what it speaks is, um, it talks about how strategic you are when it comes to the approach, especially learning from the mistakes of the past, no? Yeah. And, and, and what, what, really, what really 
it brings to mind to my attention is you know how they always say that the olympics happens every day it doesn't happen every four years right you train yes. every single day leading up to it so wearing yeah. the particular clothes in the particular humidity in the particular environment using that same cloth so much so that come execution time you're very very familiar now with it and you're mentally prepared now to do that i like it because it's all about it's really about forging your own path and um and i think that's the, the whole point of this 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 uh, this episode no so it's, it's finding your own meaning in the journey and forging your own way moving forward to the goal if, if i may add if i may add i hold myself accountable and by doing so I, I pay for my own trip. I pay for everything. I treat I treat this uh, this this I treat this as a business. I have a fund. I have a fund sa bank which is for my tournaments. And then namumuhunan ako. Namumuhunan ako sa sarili ko. Kasi kailangan maniwala ako. Eh. So namumuhunan ako sa sarili ko, I invest. Hoping na may returns. So Sana at least break even. For there are times na syempre, hindi naman laging panalo. So there are times na natatalo. But yun yung ano ko. To be able to hold myself accountable sa lahat nung, nung plan ko. Kasi I said, I said, pag may tournament ako, ito. Boom, 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 boom. When, when the SEA Games, nung, ano yung SEA Games? Nung, uh, preparing for the SEA Games, ano na agad? Uh, notes. So what should I do? How will I... Of course, sea games. I don't pay for anything because that's the government. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Then jump, jump, lang. But in private tournaments, that's what I do. So, and then when I when I win something, uh, of course, you try to give back. You don't try. I give back. So, ganda, ganda. So actually, the malabas yung pagka accountant natin na dun sa <laughs> pagka mo dun sa sinabi mo. So I really like it. It also speaks about ano. You know how high performers are also in the in the process of developing good habits. It's really about investing in little things that build up toward the bigger things that can, that will lead to successes. So thank you very much, Bing. I'll turn you over to Relly because I think it's a good transition point on the part on giving back, as you mentioned. So thank you, Bing. Um, Relly, take it away. Thanks, Rob. So hi, Bing. I think uh, taking it from from your conversation with Robbie, something just really popped up to mind. Eh? It's, it's, I think it's how you create your own destiny and how you actually can tell yourself it's either you make you or you break you. Diba? So it's really, you know, the, the preparation and the way, the way you, you, you maintain your own focus. And it's only you. It's you talaga. I mean, yeah. you know, your coaches are there to teach you, but you really have your own way. And I think that's what I admire. And I think that's how everyone is also. They have their own little way. Yung hugas ka ng pinggan eh. When you mentioned it, napaano ako eh. Kasi I, like, I really enjoy washing dishes right now. Di ba? Yeah. Kasi it, it relaxes me after a stressful day. But yeah, I think, exactly. you know, when you're prepared, you know. When you know, you know eh. I think that's, that's, that's the good thing about it. And everyone has that. Every athlete has that. That gut feel na parang, okay, preparado na ako. I'm ready to compete. Uh-huh. And, uh, if I may add lang, na na-realize ko to, because when I join tournaments, para ko siyang, ano eh, para ko siyang retreat. That's when I really, uh, more discover, for more discovery, for more, uh, parang, my, my life under a microscope, pag nasa tournament. Kasi really, ano, uh, walang iba eh, dun ka lang nakafocus. So I realized, one of the things that I realized also, is that preparation is directly proportional to your result. Minsan may chamba. Minsan may chamba na parang uy maganda yung naging ano, naging resulta, but hindi siya consistent. Kung kung nandoon ka man sa papuntang championship, nagkakaroon ng dead end because at the back of your head, nandoon yung parang eh, hindi ako naghanda eh. Hindi ako fully prepared for this. Kaya key din sa akin yung 6 week program ko because it really locks me in. It really locks me in towards the tournament. Kaya talagang one box at a time ako na ano. Kaya, kaya during this pandemic, marami din ako na-realize about myself. Because nung time na yon when I'm preparing for a tournament, it's really about, ano yun, parang sobrang focus ko. Ang dami ko rin hindi nakikita. I don't travel. I don't, ano yun. So now na-realize ko na I should travel, no? 
<laughs> I should travel. <laughs> Yun. So that's one of the realizations pala during this pandemic. So being has to travel. And that's good, diba? And, you know, the preparation in the end, you know, win or lose, diba? At least there's still that satisfaction na you prepared. Yeah. And of course, diba? Not everyone wins, not everyone loses. Yes. And, and you always yes. learn from every anything that happens. Okay, so in, in terms of my line of questioning, okay, so I want to uh, dive in more to, you know, let's say, you know, your mission to becoming one of the best pool players in the country. Yeah, it's quite it's quite different, no, from from what other athletes, you know, wanting to be where you are or what you have achieved. Most go for fame, uh, glory, and becoming top earners. But for you, you know, there was a deeper meaning. Eh? Parang everything, everything you 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 competed because everything you wanted was all about the family, your family, because you were the provider, as you mentioned uh, with your conversation with Simone and Rob. No? Uh, in fact, there was even a moment that work came first before the sport. Uh, what were your intentions behind this, and uh, how did it still work out for you? No, and you know, despite the challenges and difficulties, did you learn something from it? I'll be honest. Ah, uh, when I started, it was also about ano building on my name, hindi as a brand, but parang I came across this ano na your the first thing that you that you you get when you're born is your name. I wanted to build on it. Uh, I don't know why. But I just wanted to do it in the time. Na yun. <laughs> and then, uh, as you progress, because you're different. You're different objective. Mo. And sometimes you say this is your objective. Mo. But when you really look into your heart, it's still your objective. Mo. But I guess that comes with maturity. Then. Uh, going back to your question about the family, it's, it's just right. Na to help out because everything came from them. Eh. I mean, that's sila talaga nagsimula. When I started playing, uh, and of course, wala ako if not for them. <laughs> yun, yun unang una. And then, they really supported me in playing. Uh, they would pay for all the fees when I was younger. They would, play, uh, they would pay for all the entry fee. And then, pag natalo, syempre, I was young pa din. I was in high school. They would pay for the table fees. And then their time, just the fact na if ano yun halos halos every month kasi may tournament that was the time na sobrang boom ang billiards mga nineties so not so long ago then just a few years back then uh, so yun yun yung uh, my family my my mom and my dad even my brother who was young then would really come come with me and wait eh, and tournament ang tagal ang tagal ng tournament and they're really there. So, noon time na the family needed my help, may times, of course, na parang, syempre, mabigat din sa loob mo na lahat ng kinita mo na punta sa to pay off debts. Hindi ko i-deny yun. Pero, uh, again, as I mentioned kanina, dumating ako sa point sa maturity. Uh, dumating ako sa point na I ask, I, I, I talk to my parents I, and I thank them. Sabi ko sa kanila, because of you, you became the instrument. You became the instrument for me to mature. Kasi kung hindi nangyari yun, kung hindi nangyari yung point in our lives na nag-rock bottom tayo, hindi rin ako magmamature uh, as a person and in handling money. So, it was, syempre nung time na yun, parang hindi ko nakikita yung value na yun. But I'm just thankful lang na I always chose the right thing. Kahit minsan mahirap. Kahit minsan mahirap. Pero yung disiplina na yun, nadadala ko rin sa paglalaro. Kahit minsan mahirap, yun pa rin. You, cho- you choose the right thing. Pero not, not always. Marami akong mali. Marami akong flaws. But nung time na yun, buti na lang. I decided on it. That's great. No? I think it's a realization also, I guess, for, even for the viewers and for everyone um, who has gone through a sport and uh, has excelled that you know your family, your parents, have also sacrificed mm-hmm. for you. Yes. Right? And all the little things, di ba? Yung driving you to, to the venue or to training. Di ba? Yung mamalilit na ganyan eh. You, you, you don't notice that or you don't realize that. But, you know, it's, it's really, as now, as, 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 as parents, di ba? We do that also for our kids. And, and it really is a sacrifice. Because you want your, yeah. your son or you want your daughter to really, you know, not only not, not just excel, but really get into sports, diba? And I think that's the no? that's why giving back is no is is not a it's not a hard it's not difficult. Eh? It's not a question. 
It's just that when the sure. family's in need, you know, you're the first one there to really about. And and that's and that's how I like that you realize that. No? So okay, um, when, when, through the years now, no, you began to develop the maturity for the sport, uh, and then you, you mentioned about your mindset more that you've already accomplished what you set out for, and you know, kahit manalo or matalo ka man, di ba? It's now on equal ground, di ba? So simply put, you win some, you lose some. But you know, it's really all about the mental and how you want to achieve and get better. But, but recently, you've taken on a different role. I think in 2019, um, this time as a mentor to young aspiring kids who want to be like you. You know, what sort of mentorship have you been giving these kids, and how has this been for you? So, uh, with the team, I have five teammates who who I'm really close with. I, I call them my kids. And then uh, I wanted to, I wanted to create a culture of uh, of being uh, of celebrating each other's victory. So I initiated it by, if for example, like second ako in a tournament or pull yung finish, first, second or third, uh, I would uh, invite them. Uh, nag outing kami swimming, tapos nag enchanted kingdom kami, uh, movies, uh, dinners, movies nga namin laging tagalog. And minsan sobrang corny, but it's always funny kasi kaming lima. So kahit ano, basta as long magkasama kaming lima, uh, it's always fun. So, and then this ki- these kids, magaling sila eh. Uh, one of which, yung Icheska. Uh, sobrang galing na bata. Uh, but what I noticed is that sometimes kasi parang sa game, meron silang sariling discarte na eh. So, mahirap to really like uh, yung makialam. So, what I do is, I just, parang nandun ako as an older sibling, parang ganun. And then, may times pa nga na parang nahihiya sila minsan pag nagkakamali in like, outside billiards. And what I always say is that, no, kasi huwag kayong mahiya or just, walang ano, because pinagdaanan ko rin yan. So, I'm here I'm here as not someone uh, who will call on yung mga mali, but here lang as to guide. So I think that's my role primarily with this group is to guide them, especially yung sa mga, uh, like mga being a champion person. Ako, ano, I'd say na I'm learning. I'm learning and hoping to be one. But while I'm in that, I'm in that journey, sinasama ko din sila. Na we give back, yung ganang. And then uh, last year, 2000, uh, no, no, 2020 pala last year, no, 2019, uh, I started uh, this free coaching for women who are interested in the sport. Uh, and may mga nag-sign up, iba-iba, meron yung series of sport, meron yung uh, laro-laro lang, and then meron yung medyo mas mature, meron younger. Uh, the reason behind this is that I'm looking for women players na I'm not, I'm not getting any younger. And what I noticed is that when I joined international tournaments before, like China, Korea, Jap- Japan, lagi marami yun. But most of the countries, konti lang yung, yung, ano, yung participants like from that country. Like China before, one lang, ganyan. Two. But now, grupo sila. As in, grupo-grupo na sila. And then kami sa Philippines, dalawa lang. So sabi ko kay Cheska, gawa din tayo ng sarili nating grupo. Sabi ko, magtawanan din tayo mag- magtawanan kahit walang nakakatawa. <laughs> para lang, alam mo yun, yung parang meron din kami. Kasi yun nga, we go into, parang ang treatment kasi we go into war, but in dalawa lang tayong sundalo. So medyo, ano tayo, mas maganda yung grupo din. Para, di ba, sabi nga sa mga rakol, more chances of winning. Kasi mas marami. <laughs> mas maraming, kung mas maraming rakol coupon. So, so that's my goal. But then the pandemic happened. And I think I'll be more into it kapag after na akong naglalaro. Ngayon, paano-ano lang. Pa, pa konti konting turo. And if somebody asks me sa messenger, I would really answer na, ano, I'm excited to answer. Pag meron yung, champ, paano to, ganyan. I would, I would, I would really answer. And then, yun. But I think after, after me being an athlete, dun talaga I feel na talaga magpo-focus ako on it, to find women players. Ngayon pa lang, I'm, I'm doing that na because si Games kasi dalawa eh. Dalawang, ano yan, dalawa. So, pwedeng mag-silver gold sa end. So, si Cheska is there. So, I'm trying to look for that 
other person who will be there na anchor din na magiging silver gold pa rin sa SEA Games. I like it. I like the excitement that you're um, emitting right now and you know even even the way you the way the, your plan no yung plano mo in terms of how to how to you know to scout for players how to develop these players on and off in and outside of the sport diba creating that bond and uh, you know just being like a, like an older sister to them i think this is something that you know, is what's needed no if you were to go at a larger scale um, looking for for talent you know nationwide and i think you know to be able to create that path that you've actually created for yourself and for others to follow i think it's going to bear a lot of a lot of fruit and you know we're excited for that being and you know um wish you all the luck thank But, you so my last question now before before i turn it over to simone thank is you. you know what other forms of service um have you gotten yourself into you know besides you know contributing to the family And then, of course, contributing your time to young aspiring athletes. What else is there that we need to know, or that that the viewers want? A big part of uh, of me succeeding uh, is my faith. Now, with that, I believe in tithing, giving 10% of all my earnings. So, with that, um, like for example, when I win a when I when I win a championship or I, or Uh, podium finish or even hindi any any income that I have whether salary whether uh, from a sale of something or tournaments 10% goes to tithing uh, and sometimes I pray na, kasi tithing is for the church di ba? but sometimes I pray especially during the pandemic minsan I, I, I pray to God na Lord yung 10% baka hindi mo na buong church ha I say there are some people who need it. Eh. So, so in 10%, some of it goes to the church, some of it goes to the people, even people whom I don't know na who need it. And ang sarap kasi nung, ang sarap kasi nung feeling. Like, and this has helped me. Uh, kwento ko lang, quick kwento. Uh, before kasi, when I was supporting the family, when we went through rock bottom, when I joined a tournament, ang end goal ko, ang sinasabi ko is that, oh, I want to bring honor to the country, ganyan, ganyan. But as I mentioned kanina, when when I when I really uh, inspect my heart, ang gusto kong mangyari is to be able to have the money to pay off my brother's tuition. So with that, nagkakaroon ng dead end. Nagkakaroon ng limit. Pagka dating ng, let's say, top 32 or top 16, and then yun na yung kailangan ko na money, at that time, nagre-relax na ako. Parang, huh, nawawala na yung fight. Hindi ko sinasadya. Hindi ko sinasadya. But because siguro yun yung end goal ko sa isip ko or sa heart ko, yun yung nangyayari. And then ever since na I've started dieting, naging iba yung focus. Ang, ang na-excite ako. Like for example, after the group stage, oh, ito na yung prize money ko. 10% of this is there. Uh, is this. And then, ano kayang pwede kong bigyan? Ano kayang pwede kong mangyari? Ano kayang... And then, With this uh, part of siguro guiding the kids, guiding the kids, sinama ko sila dun sa isang uh, outreach that we did. We went to Smoky Mountain and then we, pri- we provided food and then uh, school materials and th- they were there also because I want them to see na when you win, it doesn't only benefit you but it benefits the community as well. Kasi what's the point? what's the point of you taking and taking, di ba? Parang, pagka, pagka, as you grow older, as you mature, parang nagkakaroon, siguro kasi, nandun ako sa latter part of my career, so parang, nandun na yung parang medyo legacy part. So, so yun, I, uh, and it excites me. Excites me when, like for example, pag merong may kailangan ng cue stick, ganyan, or, ano, baka after nito, marami nang mag-message sa akin ng music, ha? pero dun sa tights yun, again, ha? So, <laughs> but, yun. Uh, pag meron, like, for example, a teammate who needs acoustic, um, if I may share lang, yung teammate ko was joined the SEA Games last ano, and then kailangan ng equipment. And then I had, I had a good, uh, ano ba, good win, good performance, and then nagkaroon ako ng money for it. So, yun. Parang, 
you propel other people also to reach for their dreams. Kasi yung person na yun, once this person reaches for, ma-reach ma- ma- yung goal niya, this person will also affect yung family. Una naman yan, family. So, matutulungan niya family niya and then community. So, yun. I'm excited about it. It's great. And and that's what a way to uh, to actually leave a lasting legacy no, for yourself. And uh, yun nga, as... You know, just listening to what you said, giving your earnings, you, you know, I thought about, you know, to give and not to count the cost. Eh, you know? It's just really being selfless and and cue stick. Anyway, thanks for being Ito very... Ito na, binabanggit ko eh. Pag in-edit niyo, pakicut na lang yung part na yun kasi mukhang, mukhang magubuo nga yung manghihingi ng cue stick. I'm sure, I'm sure. Flooded yan. But anyway, being thank you very much. Um, very, very <laughs> inspiring. You. Very inspiring. So now we'll, I will turn you over to Simone. So there's so much to learn from your life story. And if you were to summarize, short and sweet, uh, what are the three things our audience can take away from your experience on how to enter new frontiers? Uh, probably I could uh, summarize it into three things. First is... Self-discovery, to know yourself, to know yourself, and to know your sport. If you're into, if you're into a sport, and then from there, uh, is to build, to build, to build a strategy, a clear, a clear plan. Kailangan mo na alam mo muna eh before ka magbuild. Kasi build kanyari magbuild ka like what I did in the early part of my career. Build ako ng build. Pero parang meron siyang nagpa-plateau ako. That's exactly it. That's why I got I got a personal coach. Kasi feeling ko nagpa-plateau ako. Hindi nagpo-progress yung game ko. It was because the knowledge I had about myself and about the game, hindi kaya. Wala pang formula. Wala pang building na nangyayari. So, and then with this, kasi discovery, and then, and then meron ka ng strategy. And then now, of course, with that, hindi malayong mangyari na may blessing. Eh. So you give back. So service. Uh, I understand na hindi naman lahat, of course, hindi naman ano eh, na makapag-tight agad ng 10% or, but you could also also tight your service. You could teach your, your time, pwede yun. Kasi may time na medyo nahirapan din ako yung time naman like katulad nito yung me teaching yung free coaching that's also typing that's that's me giving my time so yun kasi when 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 that happens it's enjoyable eh. parang you're doing something that makes a difference kamo yun parang you're doing something na na hindi lang for yourself and it makes it more worthwhile so there And there you have it, Bing Amit's top three tips on how to enter new frontiers. Number one, embrace self-discovery. Number two, build a strategy. And three, be service-oriented. So now it's time for our next segment that we call Crunch Time. So all right, Bing, (laughs) we're going to throw you some questions and you're going to have to answer them as fast as you can. All right? There's no need to explain unless we can't help but ask. All right, so for the first okay. question. All right, uh, eight ball or ni- uh, eight ball, nine ball or ten ball? Nine ball. Favorite all time sports coach? Oh, it's a, it's a Tim Cohn. Favorite tournament venue? Coach Tim Cohn. Favorite tournament venue? Uh, Shanghai. <laughs> Shanghai, China. Favorite billiards icon? Of course, given Tatay Efren, the GOAT. <laughs> Most memorable sports experience? Mm, 2011, I lost in the finals. My first time to throw a medal. Other sport you can excel in other than billiards? Basketball. Konti na lang, dunk na eh. <laughs> Athlete you admire the most? Ah, Steph Curry. Even before, uh, even before he was Steph Curry, uh, Steph Curry. 
<laughs> Favorite sports so, film? Uh, ah, uh, Chariots of Fire. Oh, nice, nice. End goals or process goals? Process, definitely. Process goals. Hobbies and life apart from billiards? Uh, what the? I tried, ano, photography. Pero, wala eh. <laughs> Hanggang cellphone lang. <laughs> okay. Favorite non-sports film? Non-sports. Non-sports. Nothing Hill. <laughs> Favorite <Yeah>. color? <laughs> uh... Aqua, aqua, uh, aqua blue, turquoise, turquoise, turquoise. Parang gold. <laughs> turquoise. Uh, favorite food? Any, any. Hindi ako mapili. So wala akong favorite. This will take us a long time if I'm going to choose a favorite. <laughs> okay. Sleeping? I love food. I'm a foodie. <laughs> okay. Sleeping or exercising? <laughs> sleeping, di ba? Nagkakape nga ako ngayon, no? So, sleeping. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh, that's difficult. To remove pain. Yes, and deep. But yeah. Necktie or bow tie? Bow tie. Sea Games, bow tie. Favorite book? Favorite book, uh, Awaken. Awaken the Giant. Life purpose in three words. Uh, <laughs> oh, grabe, ang naisip ko lang, eat, pray, love eh. Pwede ba yun? Yun na lang, iniram ko na lang. <laughs> Alternative career. CPA lawyer. Last. Favorite quote. Ah, favorite quote. <laughs> yun ang nga sasabihin ko eh. Nag-coach pa sa akin dito, yun ang nga sasabihin. Dito lo'y legit. <laughs> you can do all things through Christ. <laughs> all right. ano, ah, uh, sorry. Hindi ko alam ko kasi yung legit na yun because somebody coach. So, ano, long, ah, uh, short-term pain, long-term pleasure. Hindi siya talaga quote, but parang a phrase. Yeah. All right. So, I should seriously get a bell right now. But, you know, crunch time is done. And thank you so much, Bing, for, for really being super game to answer our questions and our different segments. And also for being super game to answer our crunch time questions. And now we've come to the end of the episode for our final messages. So, Relly and Robbie, let's share with our teammates what we have in store for them in our next episodes. So there you have it, folks. On behalf of the Gold Diggers, I would like to thank you for joining us tonight. Please do share your thoughts with us on Facebook in our page and tag the Gold Diggers PH. Or you can post or comment on our video uploads on Facebook and YouTube. We'd really love to hear from you guys. Thank you also to everyone who has followed us on our Facebook page and subscribed to our YouTube page as well. If you haven't liked or followed us, we hope you can click that button and continue to dig with us. Tune in next week as we dig in with former DLSU national team player and Bayanian artist Marielle Benitez Habeliana. Got any questions for Marielle? Hit us up on our Facebook page. See you guys. Robbie, take us home. Thank you, Relly. So, Bing, your life story so far is one of adversity and more importantly, boldness. And we thank you so much for your time, the wisdom, and the experience that you shared with us and the rest of our listeners. Uh, to you, thanks to you, there's a lot that we can learn from from sports, especially in paving a way forward in uncharted territory. So maraming, maraming, maraming salamat, Bing. Teammates like Bing, we can realize that the mental game is an aspect that daily grinders need to work on. And once again, we are happy to share that we began the Gold Diggers Mental Health Minute in partnership with Rock Ed Philippines this year. So in order to provide tangible mental health tips one minute at a time. Join us and join join us and our fellow gold digger uh, gang Badoy Kapati on Thursdays on the Gold Digger social media pages, as well as on Spotify for the details 
and get those mental reps in. So to our teammates with Rock, Rock Ed Philippines, thank you, thank you so much for what you do. And lastly, once again, let's continue the fundraising for our advocacy pitch and PH. Please continue helping out our fellow Filipinos who are in most need by following our Facebook for more details on how you too can pitch in for PH. So over, over to the woman of the hour, Rubilen Bing Amit, your final message for this episode, please. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tonight. Thank you, Rally. Thank you, Simone. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you to the gold, gold diggers for, for, this, for this program. Because I'm sure this is not only applicable to athletes, but also to the people who are trying to pursue different endeavors. So maraming maraming salamat for your time. And I hope that the ones who are listening, meron kayong napulot tonight. And again, I would like to thank the Gold Diggers because you guys are making a difference. This is tightening. This is service. So, and your preparation, definitely service. So again, thank you. And uh, I hope this is not the last. Such a pleasure to have you with us, Bing. And that ends our session for today. So catch you on the next episode on The Gold Diggers. Remember to dream, dig in, and win. Take care and see you.